very warm greetings from ICMR NIM. I am happy to share the data of uh, micro, ma micro and macronutrient composition of uh, millets and also a few slides on uh, trends in millet consumption and also our results of our meta analysis. So here, so here uh, NNMB in NIN was established in 1972 in 10 major states and then it was expanded to 16 states across India and the data collected, the dietary data collected from this survey showed a steady decline in millet consumption in different states in India. So right from 100 grams per day, it has come down to around 30 grams per day per individual. Even uh, among population, different uh, occupational groups like labor, agriculture, business and others, we saw a steady decline over a period from around more than 100 to around 50 grams per day per individual. So here concomitantly during the same period we have also registered a steady increase in non-communicable diseases. Here if you, if you can observe closely what you see here is uh, while it was 30.5% uh, now it is 55.4% and um, younger population is being uh, affected by this non-communicable diseases particularly diabetes, coronary heart disease, atherosclerosis and stroke etc. And uh, the, all these nutri I mean, all these diseases are related to nutrition. Unhealthy dietary habits are the main uh, uh, reason for this increase in uh, non-communicable diseases. And what we, uh, although we have seen a decline, a major decline in communicable diseases, infectious diseases, and nutrition-related disorders, like what you see here is decrease, a steady decrease in these diseases. There has been increase in non-communicable diseases. So these are all related to unhealthy dietary habits and changing dietary pattern in India. So along with this we have also seen a steady increase in overweight obesity and also abdominal obesity. What we see here is among the tribal population, among the rural population and also among the urban, urban population we have seen increase in overweight obesity. But what is uh, strange is uh, very typically in India we see more abdominal obesity more than overall obesity which is very unique to Indian population. Across the world when we see more of overall obesity, what we see in India is abdominal obesity. And abdominal obesity also is uh, increasing even among the tribal regions. Along with overweight obesity, there is increase in hypertension and diabetes both in men and women. So what is this changing dietary pattern? What is India eating? We are now resorting to more refined cereal based diet with no dietary diversity. Our diets are lacking in uh, fruits, vegetables, nuts, milk, legumes, so there is no variety. And also we are consuming more high calorie but low nutrient diet foods. This is what is called unhealthy diet. The diets are much rich in calories, very high in calories but then low in nutrients. Nutrients means uh, micronutrients like vitamins, minerals, um, essential fatty acids, essential amino acids, these are li lacking and these are very very important for several metabolic processes in the body to keep our immune system healthy and also to keep our overall health and to prevent non-communicable diseases and also prevent nutrition deficiency disorders. And also we are consuming more packaged foods which is high in fat, sugar and salt. So this is what's happening, this is what has happened in the last few uh, years and decades. Now. Our uh, new, uh, food diets are missing in fiber, very low in fiber, then uh, missing in certain fatty, essential fatty acids and certain uh, amino acids and also quite low in micronutrients. While our recommendations say that we have to consume around 400 to 500 grams of fruits and vegeta vegetables, the data shows that we are consuming only about 100 to 150 grams per day per individual. So, so these fruits and vegetables, nuts, milk and legumes are all rich sources of micronutrients and fiber. Similarly, our, um, when we resort only to cereal based, uh, cereal that is rice based diet, we are not consuming whole grains like uh, millets, nutri cereals which are rich in fiber, vitamins and minerals. So let's see what the data says. So here our Indian food composition table which has been generated very recently in 2017, the latest version um, wherein we have done um, 151 nutrients, macro and micronutrients from 528 foods across India. The data shows that 
uh, millets have very high protein and also quite high in fiber fiber is very important we should not take it lightly see protein is comparable to wheat and it is higher than rice the data shows here and to tell a few lines about uh, fiber fiber can help lower blood glucose and cholesterol and lower risk of heart disease and metabolic syndrome like hypertension insulin resistance abdominal obesity and also it can regulate our triglyceride levels so consuming millets can increase our fiber intake and here this uh, table shows uh, iron and calcium content in various uh, foods like millets rice and wheat and what we see here is iron is quite high in bajra compared to rice and wheat also calcium in ragi is very high compared to rice and wheat similarly our fatty acid composition this is very uh, surprising to see that n3 fatty acid is very high in ragi which is generally not seen in seen in cereal food groups so this n3 fatty acid deficiency is also a huge problem uh, why because our consumption of n6 fatty acid is increasing because of vegetable oil consumption when we increase our intake of n6 fatty acid there should be concomitant increase in uh, n3 fatty acid because the ratio should be maintained enough n3 fatty acid is important to uh, generate our long chain fatty acids so what we see here is some of the millets are high rich in n3 fatty acids which is which is a good thing so here when we compare uh, certain nutrients uh, from rice and wheat compared to millets what we see here most of them are comparable certain nutrients like calcium and iron are higher in millets when compared to uh, rice and wheat so but what are the concerns raised about millets why do we hesitate when we recommend it to children so uh, protein is high yes compared to rice and certain millets show higher level of protein compared to wheat but then digestibility is low the pd gas is low they say then it has certain anti nutrients like tannins and phytates therefore there may be uh, problems with absorption of micronutrients then it is also said some of the studies have shown that millet consumption uh, particularly in three communities of africa was associated with goiter and also in certain parts of india including gujarat um, there has been uh, in uh, higher prevalence of anemia in these communities but then the primary source of food of uh, calories from food uh, from millets was 73 to 40% in this population so what one thing we have to what uh, we have to remember is if calorie consumption is ranging from 73 to 40% from a single food this kind of complications can happen with any food it's it's not just with millets you consume rice just uh, calories 70% calories coming from rice or 70% calories coming from wheat or 70% calories coming from fat or any other legumes or pulse complications can occur so we cannot attribute this kind of uh, prevalence of uh, this kind of presentation that is anemia and goiter in populations that is consuming very high levels of single uh, food group that is millet i mean this cannot be generalized what we recommend is dietary diversity that doesn't mean you have to consume one type of food wherein the calories come uh, 73% to 40% calories come from just one single group what we say here is when we, when uh, for example uh, in a 2000 kilo cals uh, per day per individual when we recommend 2000 when we take 2000 kilo cals for one individual in a day in that approximately we consume about 200 than 50 to 270 grams of cereals in that in that 270 to 250 kilo um, cereals grams of cereals what we recommend is let one third of that be from uh, from millets whole grains let one third i mean uh, 30% of the cereals come from millets that is whole grains let it not be again refined or uh, polished like rice let it be whole grain slightly processed to improve its nutrient quality for example malting or uh, that is germination or fermentation can improve micronutrient absorption and also can reduce uh, anti nutrients like tannins and phytates and also perhaps it can also improve protein digestibility when malting is done when uh, certain processing like uh, fermentation these things are done which can be done at uh, uh, 
household level as well so the point i'm trying to drive here is we take example from a population that is um, subsisting majorly on millets and say that millets is causing goiter or anemia and various other deficiency disorders no what we recommend is millet should be our daily diet but not to the extent of 73 to 40 percent calorie coming from millet but to a reasonably good level that uh, when we calculated in n9 this level is coming up to 90 to less than a little 100 grams of millets per day per individual can be consumed safely and we can also obtain i mean get lot of benefits from this so when we conducted the meta analysis here i wouldn't go into the details of this meta analysis methods uh, what we saw is that in the results millets as expected reduced glycemic uh, index and also improved glycemic response what we see here is and unlike uh, our expectation what we observed is this is a huge population actually and many studies were included in this meta analysis and what we observed here is surprisingly micronutrients were not adversely affected in children and also among adults millet consumption in some groups in fact it improved micronutrient status and and it did not red and either it did not reduce that is it maintained the micronutrient levels or there was no decrease uh, or it there was improvement in micronutrient levels so there are the two uh, things we observed in some population there was improvement in micronutrients level in some population there was no decrease the micronutrients levels were maintained so if we think that anti nutrients are adversely affecting the absorption of micronutrients what we expected is population that is um, where uh, i mean studies where my millet diet was given there should be in fact decrease if anti nutrients are adversely affecting but what we saw was there was no decrease in micronutrient levels so to summarize the results finger uh, finger millet supplementation in any diet had a positive effect on the glycemic index value of the study population pearl millet supplementation did not affect micronutrient status of the study population the analysis involving 1396 participants from six studies revealed no effect compared to the control diet that is something very good it has no adverse effect on micronutrients level finger millet supplementation enhanced the iron and zinc status though there was no effect on the anthropometric measurements of the preschool children but it did enhance iron and zinc level no adverse effect on fractional iron absorption of pearl and finger millets were observed and in some individual studies apart from the meta analysis sorghum based supplementary diet was found to be effective in treating severe acute malnutrition among children and a study from malawi without milk even without milk the diet was efficacious in the treatment of sam severe acute malnutrition then um, it also reduced iron deficiency anemia among children aged 6 to 23 months and 24 to 59 months so i am here i have summarized some of the research priorities priorities of millets like uh, when we try to collect lot of data to do our meta analysis what we observed is there are not many studies with respect to millets very few stray reports are there although there are a lot of criticism uh, so uh, here i have put some recommendations processing techniques to preserve nutrients and improve their bioavailability and improving shelf life also will be important like cryo processing which might also improve nutrient retention and bioavailability and reducing mycotoxin contamination this is also another area which should be explored and recommended um, to improve storage facility um, bio fortification to enhance nutrient content then malting and fermentation techniques to decrease anti nutrients quantifying and establishing evidence of health benefits through large well designed trials this is lacking and we have to take uh, studies in this angle as millets are coarse grains um, ultra processing to promote acceptability uh, might reduce the beneficial effects and this should not be done i mean as much as possible we should not try to process it um, i mean ultra processing should not be done processing should be minimized to improve its storage uh, conditions to improve its uh, nutrient bioavailability at the same time 
processing should be kept to as much minimum as possible then tech techniques also should be uh, tried to improve crop yield thank you very much for your patient hearing thank you thank you for this opportunity